Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the course of uh, deep learning with the uh, TensorFlow. Uh, I'm happy that you you uh, follow us for, uh, on this on these videos. So on the on the previous uh, video, we saw that okay, if we add more uh, dense layer or if we increase the capacity of our, our model with, with adding more uh, hidden layers or fully connected layers, uh, we will. Uh, Increase the accuracy, or we can reduce the the uh, the, the loss or error. So, uh, as as uh, as you saw, uh, compare with the, the the green one is the, the just the soft simple softmax model, and uh, the orange one is the the fully connected layers with the five uh, fully connected layers. Uh, so we we saw this uh, improvement on the accuracy and also the the error reduction on the on the uh, loss. So, if we remove this, okay, we see that here we have a loss function of the of the training. So always we have uh, accuracy and the loss function of training and accuracy and the loss function of the of the validation or test. You can see both names. Uh, on uh, on lit literature, uh, so we have these two, and we should also do a comparison between these two as well. So, okay, if we consider this loss function of the training and the loss function of the of the of the validation or testing, uh, we see if we just plot these two, two curves on one graph, we see that, okay, for the validation uh, loss here, uh, we have uh, the red one is the validation loss, and uh, the, the blue one is the training loss. So uh, we see that here, at the, at the beginning, it uh, starts from here, or the, the loss uh, function starts from here, so it goes slowly to 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 down uh, to to or or reduced slowly. So what we can do to reduce it fastly, a little more 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 fastly. Uh, so by changing or uh, sigmoid activation function with relu, we hope to to do this. So instead of having a, la a curve like this, it will be good to have a curve like this, or like this, okay? Fastly uh, reduction on the, on, the, on the curve, or that it also has a, an effect on the ac accuracy. So here you see a, a, a sigmoid function, at the, the left side and the, here, uh, you can see the, the ReLU function. So uh, a difference is uh, with the, the ReLU function is that uh, any, for the ReLU, uh, any values uh, less than zero will be equal to, to zero. And uh, the value of uh, more, than, more than zero will, will assign, zero will assign uh, one, uh, a value. And why it's, uh, it's, uh, useful for us because a biologist said that uh, brain was working uh, is, is working uh, similar to the relu function uh, compared with the with the uh, sigmoid so it was the ben, uh, first inspiration of using the, the relu and also in the in the practice we we, we see that it's uh, it's uh, helpful so if we Let's go back to, to our codes. If we see our code with the, with the ReLU, I just should uh, mention that you can find these codes and the text version of the, of the, the, the website. And you can use it. You don't need to, to write it line by line. You can just uh, use it and just uh, play with this. Uh, and uh, adopt it with your your uh, your problem or your uh, your data. So uh, the same 
at the, the first block, the same at the, the second block. Almost uh, all uh, blocks are, are the same. I just changed the a new name uh, for for this. I changed it to, to a new name, uh, fully connected Relo Softmax. It can be any any name that you like. So and also uh, here uh, you can uh, we can define the direction similar to the the previous one and then reshape normalized and uh, convert it to the one, uh, one hot encoding. Here is the, uh, the only place that you need to, to do the modification. So instead of using uh, softmax activation, uh, we, uh, excuse me, uh, using the, the sigmoid activation, we just use relu, just this. But for the last layer, we don't touch the, the softmax uh, activation. And then we create our model and we compile it, similar to the previous one. And then we, we fit it. So let me again to reduce it to, to 50, uh, excuse me, to 5. And then run it. So it, uh, it goes uh, well. So you can see even for the, for the first... Uh, Epoch, we have uh, a 96%. Just by changing the activation uh, layers, we, 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 Im, we get an uh, improvement uh, for, for our, our model to 96, 97. So it's, it's, I can say that uh, we speed up our, our, our model or our, uh, our results. So if we back to, if we back to our, a tensor board, and if we make our relu softmax uh, locks, you can see for the training, instead of starting from this point, as you can see uh, the, the, the orange one, instead of starting at this point, it uh, starts at this point. So and it is speed of our process. So although at the end it will be uh, almost equal, but here we start at the at the at the less uh, less error. And here for the for the validation also you can see here it uh, the blue one that is the the fully connected Relu softmax model. It start at the at almost the zero point one five something like this and compare with this and even you can see we we have less uh, less uh, loads uh, compare on the on the relu compare with the with the sigmoid one and even in in the accuracy you can see okay we reach to the accuracy of uh, around 98 i can say that 98 Point five, compared with the with the, the sigmoid one that was uh, zero point ninety five uh, ninety seven or ninety seven point five percent of accuracy. So an improvement, and it's it's enough for us. Okay. So the good reason that we use Relu, we we have an improvement. That's good. So. Uh, By this, if we, if we compare it, so we can see validation loads uh, on transparent red and the, the training loads on transparent uh, uh, blue for the, for the sigmoid and uh, for the sigmoid for using the sigmoid activation function. And uh, for in the red uh, validation loss of the, the, the relu function and the training loss when we use the, the, the relu function. You can see it's, uh, I can say that much, much faster. But although at the end uh, they will be almost equal. If you go more details, you see that it's not uh, exactly equal, but uh, it's almost uh, close to each other. But we start, it's a start uh, from the less, less uh, error or less uh, loss. 
So, but if we put training loss and the, the validation loss, even with the, the ReLU, we will see there is a distance between these two. You can see here, there is a distance. So, and it's not good for our model. We call it overfitting. So, if there is a the distance between them, we call it over, overfit. So, you see here, at the beginning, they became uh, together till, I can say that, uh, epoch number five. And then as the, the, the number of epochs increased, it goes up. And the, the, for the training, the loss of the, the training, it goes, uh, goes down. So we, have, we, we can see this, this difference. So to solve this problem, one, if, uh, one of the options that we can use is using a uh, dropout. So what, we, can, what we, we do in the dropout, if we assume such a this model, we actually turn some of the neurons off in our, our training model. So for example, we say that uh, we wanted to shut our neuron the, the down uh, for, for example, 50%. So 50% of the neurons in the training uh, mood will, uh, will raise, I can say, or, or uh, even the, the weight and bias for that uh, connection will not update. So it's, it means that we don't use it. We don't use them uh, on our, our model. But for, the, for the, the validation and also for the, for the testing, we, we use these, uh, these neurons. So here, as you see, uh, at the left side, you can see that we have the standard neural network in the net with the all neurons that we use, and then we assign the, the weight and bias to them. But here, at the, at the right side, you can see uh, that we, we shut some of the neurons down. Uh, and then uh, we use the we use the other other neurons uh, on on that. So shut uh, on uh, we shut down on 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 them. So this is uh, one of the what possibility to to reduce the uh, overfitting. So if we back to our our model. So let me to close it. So let me shut it down. And then uh, if we open a fully connected ReLU dropout. So here, similar to the, the previous one, we import our, uh, our the data. This is the point that we use the dropout. As you remember on, on uh, the previous videos, I said that, OK, we don't, uh, we don't uh, use this uh, function here on, on the previous codes. But here, in this code, we will use it, dropout. So uh, we import the libraries. We, uh, we define a new name for it. And I, I consider, OK, I wanted to make off 25% uh, of our, our uh, neurons in our model. So just define a name. And then the same as before. You already know what they do. And then I consider, OK, uh, keep uh, 20, 25 percent. Okay, so 25 percent will uh, will uh, remain, and the rest will be uh, off. Okay, so uh, the, the same sequential dense layer activation relu, and then we just add uh, dropout after each each layer. So one dropout at the first layer, second layer, third layer, and the fourth layer. So and for the for the last one, we we don't use any. Uh, dropout. So if I uh, run also this uh, code and compile it, this model and compile it, let's me again to reduce it to the five. And if I, I run it, it, uh, it will do this. And uh, if we wanted to see it, we can back to the, to the tensor board. And you see that, okay. 
fully connected layers with the draw part. If we see with the difference with the, the ReLU, you can see here on uh, validation uh, accuracy, loose of Mac. Okay, no, excuse me. So uh, the when we keep uh, just uh, 20, 25 percent of uh, of uh, data uh, of our neuron, uh, we see that okay, we reduce the uh, they reduce the loads on the validation, and uh, it's almost for the accuracy almost the same. For the training, it's almost the same, and also for the for the train for the accuracy of training, it's uh, again almost the same. So we reduce it. If we we back to this, we here we see that the, the uh, transparent red we can see. For the for the uh, normal without uh, without uh, dropout, and the red one is with the with the dropout. Okay, so we reduce this distance between uh, the the loss of validation and the loss of uh, training. We reduce a little of this, but we still have overfitting. So what we can do uh, for to solve uh, this problem, as we we wanted to reduce the overfitting as much as we can. So here, there are, uh, this is the question that why, in general, why we have uh, overfitting. So for this, maybe we have too many neurons. So we define 200, 100, uh, 60, and 30 at each layers. So maybe we don't have enough uh, data, which is by, back to the or, uh, first discussion of why we use uh, deep learning and when we can use deep learning. And, or maybe we have a bad network. So if we change our network to another model or uh, something like this, maybe we can reduce the, the overfitting. So think about this. We will uh, talk about it uh, to in the next video, and we will see how we can reduce more the distance between the laws of the validation and the laws of the of the training to avoid any overfitting on our, our model. Thank you for watching. See you on next video.